week, the fourth movie in the Purge franchise hits theaters. That means it's time to stop and rank all four Purge movies from the worst to the best. Now, before I give you my ranking, go ahead and tell me yours down below in the comment section. Tell me which ones you love, which ones you hate, and everything in the middle. And this is one of those franchises where people have very different opinions, and some of the movies, in particular that first movie, are very different from the other ones. So I'd love to hear your take on it. Now, also, before I give you my take, here's what the critics had to say about it over on Rotten Tomatoes. Coming in in last place is The Purge with 38%. In third place is The First Purge with 47%. In second place is The Purge Election Year with 53%. And in first place, with still not a great score, is The Purge Anarchy. So sometimes when I use Rotten Tomatoes, people ask me, why do you use Rotten Tomatoes? They're biased. I hate their reviews. I disagree with them. They don't know what they're talking about. Their reviews are awful. The thing is, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't review movies. They're an aggregate. They collect the reviews of a bunch of professional critics, and then they basically provide an answer to a question. What percentage of critics recommend this movie. So I've actually watched all four of these movies within the last two weeks, so I've done my homework, I'm prepared to talk about them, so let's get started. Coming in in last place is The Purge. So this movie had a great concept, the idea that there's a night where nationwide there are no rules, there are no laws, there are no police, Anything goes. And what did they do with this amazing concept and even a pretty good cast when you get Lena Headley and Ethan Hawke in there? What do they do with that? A home invasion movie. Which is a problem because the concept, the setup, the world that they create, you can tell all kinds of different stories that are unique to a situation where there are no laws, there are no rules, and they decided to tell a story about something that you can tell that story without needing it to be purge night. Because if you're at your home and you don't want people coming into your home, it doesn't matter that it's legal for people to come into your home. I mean, and so the story that they picked to tell just made no sense for the surrounding world that they created all around. There's nothing you can do to explore the interesting concept when you just do a home invasion movie. So, such a disappointing direction to go with it. And even the way the story plays out, it's a movie to me that starts off kind of strong, like interesting, intriguing world building, and then you get into the home invasion part and you're like, okay, I, you know, I wish we were out in the world watching The Purge happen, but okay, the, fair enough. And then as it moves into the third act, it just got weird, it got ridiculous. And then it ends with like people sitting at a table and you're like, I, I do not like the direction that they went with this movie at all. I feel they totally wasted all of the setup, all the potential of The Purge and this movie, total waste. So for me, while it's not an abysmal movie in my mind, it's not one that I particularly enjoy. And every time I rewatch it, I go, oh, this, this one really is pretty disappointing. Coming in in third, so I was very excited for this movie because they got Frank Grillo to come back. So there's so much potential to have another solid adventure out in the purge with a great action star in the lead. And then just in the basic concept of what they were trying to do with the movie, with the idea of the resistance, it's set further along in the future. People are trying to take down the new founding fathers. So much potential once again for a great little adventure inside of this universe of the purge. The execution on this one just really didn't work for me though. And there's several things about it where I think there were just some a little bit misdirections, maybe a few too many plot lines going on, so it felt uh, kind of disjointed to me. Some characters that were annoying, like the candy girl that wants a candy bar. I mean, things like that just felt a little bit off to me. But I think where this one really lost me is that I think their head might have gotten a little bit too big. I like when these movies have ideas and explore the possibilities inside of them, but when they start kind of going in this direction of, we got to take down the man and we're making political commentary about the poor and the rich, and it gets so far ahead of itself. Like, this is the schlocky action horror hybrid franchise with thrills, jump scares, and crazy insanity. It's not a political thriller. It doesn't need, we, we don't need to go that far down that path. And I think when it does that, it, it really weighs the movie down in a way that it shouldn't. And in particular, as this one moved into the third act and like the cult-like new founding fathers aspect, I, I just didn't care for that side of things really at all. And so it bogged down some of the fun of being out in another purge with Frank Grillo being able to mow guys down and things like that. So this one comes in third place for me. For me, there's a pretty big jump from third place to second place. I have a lot of fun with these top two ones. They use this purge universe well, at least in my 
my mind were the bottom two. I had a lot of frustrations with them. Our runner up is going to be The First Purge. The movie that I just saw, I actually debated back and forth as to whether I was gonna put this one at the top because this one worked for me. I mean, I really dug the story that they told and you get nervous when the studios decide to do a prequel and instead of moving the story forward, like let's go back and see where everything came from. But I thought they found a way to do that that kind of gave us a new look at The Purge. It was a contained environment. It was an experiment. There's people kind of observing it. It's becoming kind of this national thing that people are watching. And I thought all of that made for some real nice additions to the mythology and a different angle on the material that we haven't seen in any of the previous movies. Just from there, I thought some of the characters and the arcs they gave them worked a little bit better than some of the other films because we didn't necessarily have so many disjointed storylines. They were a little bit closer together. The people knew each other before the purge broke out. And then even kind of the drug dealer with a code of honor that really cares about people that's noble and giving him an, a redemptive arc throughout the movie and other things like that, it works for me. Now, this isn't meant to be high art. It's not meant to be great cinema. The, at the end of the day, it's just good schlocky horror action fun and it worked well. And even the way they kind of developed the story, so it's it starts out pretty tame and then they kind of launch the purge and you start to get some scares in there, a little bit of action, but it's not purgy enough even for the people launching the purge and so just as the movie goes along it escalates and escalates and escalates and gets kind of crazier strains plausibility a little bit more as it goes along but makes for more fun as it goes along and when they got into that building at the end of the movie i was like I'm on board. I am totally on board with what they're doing with this movie. This is working for me. So where I decided to actually not put this one in first place, because I was strongly considering it coming out of the theater, is that this one, kind of like election year, was a little bit too overt in its political messaging. In particular, this one, it's hard to not pick up on all the anti-Trump stuff going on in the movie. There's some things that were like when all of the mercs are white, it just, that's a little bit weird to go in that far down a path um, and kind of pretty, pretty off-putting at times. So there's a bunch of things about this one that I really liked. It almost inched out to, to first place, but just a little bit too overt in the politics that kind of pulled me out of it just a little bit. But coming in at first place is The Purge Anarchy. Coming after the first movie that was such a disappointing use of the concept of the purge they nailed it with the second one. They figured out what we wanted, which was to be out on the streets and see a bunch of different groups of people that get stuck in the purge, some people that wanna be in the purge, trying to travel through this world of chaos, anarchy, hence the title, and in the midst, you get some nice little ideas sprinkled into it. This, like if you've got the idea of the purge happening, what would be kind of the dynamics culturally that would happen? Well, uh, rich people would be able to pay off dying poor people to get to kill them in their living rooms. There's all these sorts of little things like that that you would think, yeah, that's something that would happen. It's kind of an interesting little idea to sprinkle into the mix. And for me, this is the movie that balanced the action and the thrills with the ideas the best. It doesn't go so far down them that they're like trying to preach at you while being a schlocky movie. It's not doing anything like that. It's just putting ideas out there that make you go, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's intriguing what they're doing with that. It gives you like people to root for and root against as always with I think all these movies are actually cast really well for the types of movies that they are it's just a really nice little cast Frank Grillo of course being a great action star that gets to take the lead in this one and throughout the mix you get the action you do get the scares and it, it has variety it moves quick so for me this is the movie that has best been able to take this idea of the purge the anarchy in the streets and have a fun time in it and kind of have a little bit of character arcs in there as well, especially with Frank Relo's character, what they were able to do with that. So for me, while this one did have some close competition with the first purge, it comes out in first place by having the best mix of all the things that make this franchise work. Anyway, so that's my ranking of the franchise. How about you? Tell me down below in the comment section, which ones do you love, which ones do you hate, and everything in between. And this one, I think this one could be a little bit interesting. I know a lot of people have anarchy up top, but some of the other ones seem like people have very different opinions on them. So I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about all that fun stuff. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Please share your ranking with me. If you've already clicked that subscribe button, go ahead and ring that bell so you get notifications whenever I post new videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.